Hey guys, uh, so my god, it's Kenny here from Team Execution, and I've been asked to make a deck profile on my Machina gadgets, so I will. First, I run two Peacekeeper. You know, you set him, he's destroyed, you search for gear frame, gear frame searches for other things, other good things, I'll explain later. I run stoplight, two, two, two. Um, I always love having a gadget in the hand because that allows for more gadgets in the hand and I always have hand control and uh, tribute fodder if I need it for uh, Fortress, yeah Fortress. I run two Force, can actually summon him but he's wonderful tribute fodder for um, for Fortress. You tribute and then you can instantly summon a Fortress from your hand or graveyard which is always wonderful to have a big beater on the field. I run one Scrap Recycler. Um, Two was kind of excessive for me because I mean, like, oh, you summon first turn, the ditch. Oh, you have a 900 beater on the field. Wow, you know that's so hard to get over now. But um, uh, with two, you have a higher chance of pulling it, and it's better for late game than early game. But I always seem to pull one early game, and that always made me mad. Kind of like pulling a pot on the first turn, pot of avarice. It's like ew, useless. Uh, one cyber valley. I love cyber valleys. My favorite card in the deck, not really, but, um, I love, he's probably my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! monster, actually, but I love him. Attack, negate, summon, and battle phase, remove from play, destroy everything on the field, roll the earth, etc. Um, we have three mock and a gear frame, uh, summon him, search for a mock and a monster, uh, generally, you want to search for force if you have a fortress in your hand, or... I like to search for uh, a fortress if I don't have a force in my hand, and that way, just in case uh, I get a pot of or not pot of what the hell pot of avarice, I get a um, morphing jarred. I can just you know I got excuse me I got fortresses in the graveyard, which is always wonderful to have fortresses in the graveyard on the hand. And actually, I prefer them in the graveyard. Then three fortresses, uh, 2,500 beat stick, extremely easy to uh, wonderfully easy to sun, and it's oh, it's amazing. I I love this card. Uh, it's destroyed by battle, you pop one monster, uh, targeted by monster effect, you look at their hand, it's carbon card. I mean, it says randomly, but how can you just randomly just carbon card for looking at their hand? It doesn't work like that. I need a mind crush. That would work so well. A mind crush. Then, I run two solidarities. You always have a, uh, first ed in the graveyard because you're always having these guys in the graveyard and these guys right here these for forces are these forces here you know the first ed so I'm always gonna get 800 on everything and it's just wonderful to have you know eight oh drop another one eight that's extra 1600 on everything which makes my life so much easier to win uh, then I have just you know two MST back row control it's just basic stuff. Now, I run two, two noblemen. Um, JT, JCT, whatever he calls himself on this channel. My, my good friend Jonathan, he, uh, he always sides in magnetic mosquitoes, or whatever they're called. Destroy all face-up machine-type monsters, and it makes me very depressed. So I run one, I run two noblemen. I also run another uh, trap, I'll explain later when I get to it, but you run, click one, you know, pop. Pop a monster face down, and generally, if I'm lucky, because he runs both gravekeepers and um, I'm putting black wings now. But when he runs his gravekeepers, which he runs most of the time, uh, you hit a spy that goes all three of his spies or all three of his mosquitoes, and uh, yeah, it makes the game a lot easier to win. Two smashing because you know you got to get over those big defense monsters, which I generally don't have a problem with. But um, if I'm gonna go for game and I have to use one of my boss monsters to attack and I don't want to to attack. You smashing a little guy, you know, you pop a little guy and then you attack for game. Then we got reborn, dark hole, pot. I love pot. You go through monsters so fast in this game. The only in this game in this deck, the only thing that you don't want to send back are your fortresses. Your fortresses they they love the graveyard. They summon from the graveyard or from the hand. Then I got my body. Limit removal, you gotta push for game. You're gonna get a, a 5k forch, for, yeah, fortress, uh, you know, pow, attack for game. Anyways, then I got giant true nade, you know, the giant true nades. Book of Moon. I hate how they got limited. It annoys me, but, oh, well, limited. Uh, then I got Solemn. 
Trap dust shoot. Now, if you're running trash dust, trap trash dust, trash dust, trap dust shoot. I uh, advise you run a uh, mind crush as well. You know, just to be a dick like that. But I don't have any mind crushes. I need mind crushes, but I'm poor. Here, ceasefire. This is the other card I was talking about to get around magnetic mosquito and uh, I'll flip effects really. Um, you activate, your opponent flips all face down monsters face up, flip effects are not activated, and they take 500 damage per effect monster on the field, which is, it can be a game winner sometimes if they have enough monsters and you have enough monsters on the field. Um, Torrential, basic, sock, I don't run dimensional prism because I'm poor, as stated before, but that doesn't stop me from winning. And then, two bottomless, yes, I love bottomless chapel, it's like... One of my, I think Bottomless is my favorite card in the deck. Um, I don't know why, but I just love seeing the satisfaction of seeing a big boss monster get removed from play. And now that the the the, the priorities has changed, you can't call priority on anything. <laughs> I think it's raped. That's that's always fun. So yo, this has been Kenny. Oh my God, it's Kenny. Hope you guys enjoyed this. It'll, that's amazing. It's amazing.